Broadcasting live from ATDC in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Startups Engineered. Now here's your host, John Avery. Welcome to ATDC Radio and welcome to our new series, Startups Engineered, featuring director of ATDC, John Avery. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, John, uh, the ATDC has an extensive curriculum about startups, and um, I would guess that there's a balance uh, when it comes to that curriculum. Is there... Is it possible to have too much curriculum in a startup program? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. With that conversation comes up quite a lot around here. We, uh, we're always trying to bring the best content to provide the best uh, resources for an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a, personally, I'm a technical background. I'm an electrical engineer from Georgia Tech. And so um, classrooms are comfortable in the sense that I, I can gravitate. I get that model of learning. And, um, but it comes up quite often that in the case of entrepreneurship, there's actually some guardrails, some dangers that you can – uh, run into when you're trying to become an entrepreneur in a classroom. Uh, it's a little bit like studying gymnastics, right? If I were to spend as much time in the world in a classroom studying gymnastics, I'm still never going to be any good on a dance floor. Uh, and entrepreneurship is a little bit like that. There's an aspect to it that's physically out in the world. And so certainly there's things you need to learn in a classroom, the frameworks and the tools and the sort of the background, how to understand what's going on. But it's mostly practitioner sort of skill that you need to learn by being out in the world. And for a technical founder um, like myself, there's a danger that I'll believe that I'm making progress and getting better and somehow um, improving myself by being in the classroom, learning things that seem interesting and not actually making progress in the things that actually matter. So um, we do try to provide a, a, a mix where the things that we study in the classroom provide those frameworks and tools that you then need to go use in the world. And it's even worse than that in the sense because in the case of something like gymnastics, when you've learned it and you've demonstrated it on the floor, that's the end in itself, right? You've demonstrated your mastery of that in, in, the, in doing it. But in entrepreneurship, they're just tools that you can be good at mastering, but you have to use the tools to learn what you need to learn from the world in order to make your successful startup. And those that's an even second step beyond being good at being using the tools. You have to actually then go use the tools to solve the actual problem of your startup. And um, again, the danger is that when you think that you're making progress by being busy, checking off boxes, attending classes, uh, reading concepts and learning frameworks that you're not actually making as much progress that you think you're making. And I would imagine that it's also a trap for um, maybe more of the technically minded that you've created this solution in your mind and on a whiteboard, but you haven't talked to a customer that's maybe willing to buy it or at the price that it would require you in order to really make it. That's exactly right. Yeah. You, you, we all have a tendency to believe that the world is like we think it is in our mind. Mm -hmm. And when you're a technical person and you can kind of frame those models in your mind through that model of learning, it's really easy to deceive yourself. And it's easy to forget that the thing that you think about the world is in your head is probably the most irrelevant thing there is. Uh, it It's um, the only thing that matters is what's out there in the actual world, the truth that's actually out in the world. And so to the extent you can convince yourself that whatever you think is true about the world is not necessarily true, the better you'll be able to learn. Entrepreneurship is about rapid learning. It's all about rapid learning. And a lot of times the things you think you know are the biggest impediment to actually learning. And so the hard part about entrepreneurship is to get the things you think you know away from your head. Right, so out you, of your head into the world right. as and quickly as possible. So that the actual truth in the world can actually reach over that wall and, and correct your assessment so that you can actually see the world as it is, even if it's not the way you want it to be, which is quite often the case. So now what are some ways that ATDC actually kind of helps kind of protect the the technical entrepreneur from themselves? Mm. The primary curriculum that we have today that, that I think is interesting is on Tuesdays we provide a customer discovery class that alternates every week between theory and tools. So in the one, one week you're studying about why we do this, what it's about, and the second week you study what methodologies you actually use to do it. And the purpose then is to go out into the world and actually do it. And on Thursdays, we have a lab where they come back and talk about what they've been learning in the field. And then there's mentors and uh, staff in the classroom giving feedback to the entrepreneur. When the entrepreneur is talking about what they've been learning in the world, then the, the founder, the uh, 
mentors can ask questions. Well, how did you ask the question? What did they actually say? And a lot of times you realize you're asking questions that only have one answer, the one you want them to give you. Mm -hmm. And most people in the real world would rather give you the answer you'd want to hear. They don't want to create a conflict. They don't want to really um, make you feel bad, especially if they're your friends anyway, which is what most entrepreneurs go to first when they're trying to go uh, into the world. No one ever tells you what they actually think. They just tell you what you want to hear, especially if you make it clear that's what you want to hear. So the hard part is about getting yourself to a point where you can ask neutral questions that don't beg the answer. And then um, even if you can get to a point where you can try to encourage the negative response so that you can actually see if it triggers and then uh, actually hear what they say. And so that you can internalize that and then learn from the actual world so that you can achieve the, the better result. Now, you mentioned earlier that your background is as a technical founder uh, a couple times, and in, and that's kind of your uh, natural state, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, do you have examples that you have some scar tissue where you went in and made these assumptions based on your own thinking, and then the, you know, the world kind of helped? Well, helped you self-correct? Uh, not to get too specific, but I have had a couple of failures in startups, <laughs> and I, uh, I've learned that I do what, way better when I'm partnered with someone who is that more um, – um, business focused and externally uh, tuned person who can kind of learn that better. My strength is more about when I'm worked with working with a co-founder who is um, who knows what that vision is and, and can see the truth in the world that he wants to go after. And he has a certain amount of constraints, money and time to get there. Then that's where I come in to sort of bring that to fruition. So there are places in a startup where um, technical people have to be, partnered with those uh, those externally focused people to bring the product to market, to sort of make the thing real with very limited constraints. So you live in a world where um, you've got a founder who's essentially sees a world that doesn't yet exist and has a very few number of resources to get there in a very short time to get there. And then you have to figure out a way that you can somehow deliver something about it that's close enough that you can keep the train moving in that direction as a technical person. And so just knowing, to me, knowing that I'm better when I'm partnered with that person helps me move, move faster because then I know that I need that to sort of augment what I would otherwise be able to do. And that's one of the benefits of the ATDC is to kind of help that entrepreneur learn rapidly. That's right. There's no nothing at scale ever happens as a single individual. Everything that's going to have scale has to be done by a team. Mm-hmm. And so what we really try to focus on here is strong relationships and uh, building strong cultures, things that will attract and retain the best people. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's the only competitive advantage you ever have. So now if somebody wanted to learn more about the ATDC, uh, where should they go? ATDC.org is our main website. Uh, my email address is john.avery at ATDC.org. Good stuff. Well, John, thank you so much for sharing your story today. And we're excited to learn more from you on Startups Engineered. Thank you.